Mr. Yu, you mentioned that you were asking the remaining 290 people who haven't been permanently re relocated, what is their barrier? Um, do you have any, what, what has been your feedback so far? It's 219, and uh, it's uh, Parks and, uh, and Rec and Office of Housing, I believe, that are conducting the surveys. I have, they only just started, so I really can't say. I don't know if Roxy has anything she could add. I'm not even sure she has the information yet on the surveys. Okay, great. As of yesterday, we have um, a total of 219 people that have been displaced and they are, we have about 35 of them are at Keao and the rest of them are at uh, Pahoa. Every day we have people that are moving out that are getting placed into micro units or different housing, uh, various alternatives, okay? Uh, some of them are moving into rental units. Some of them are uh, moving back to the mainland. Some of them are uh, purchasing property and uh, getting plans going to build a new property. Some of the farms, I have uh, individually talked to some of the farmers who, who have lost land down there. And they've already purchased property uh, in uh, orchid land and they'll be starting their farm up there. Um, I was quite surprised to see how um, uh, they were very resourceful because the minute everything started breaking out and they were told, hey, it's headed your way. They moved a lot of their property, a lot of their plants and their farming uh, things out of the area. They moved them and um, they immediately applied with the Small Business Association and they got grants. Uh, they got low interest rate loans. Uh, the SBA also gives out homeowner loans, okay? Um, I think it's like 3.6% interest, uh, 30 year fixed rate, rate, uh, rate alone. So um, if they go to the recovery center, all these agencies are set up over there and you just go site to site to site to site. Don't go in with the mindset that you're not gonna qualify. Just hit everyone and see what happens. A uh, couple of people that I came across down in, um, I went down to Rosette's nursery um, because the Kapoho Palms had uh, an annual sale, and since I was looking for some palms, I went down there and bought all my palms from her. And uh, she told me the minute that this all, uh, she's the one who gave me the insight about the different farmers, uh, what they all got together, they went down, they applied for loans, they got their loans, they got some of their insurance money already, and they already are making their move already to Orchid Land. Uh, in addition to that, uh, last week, Thursday and Friday, we had FEMA, Hope Services and Housing, went to the Keao shelter, and they talked to every single member there. There was 100% of um, compliancy. All of them were uh, interviewed, and we found out what barriers were preventing them from moving on to transitional housing, or what were their needs. So all of that has been taken care of as far as for Keao goes. Uh, for Pahoa, it's today, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, they will be doing the same thing. Uh, over the weekend, we had eight individuals removed from Pahoa shelter. They were uh, trespassed, and they will not be allowed back. Uh, they were found to be ineligible. They were not from an evacuation zone. In fact, they were from other parts of the island. They had heard that there was a shelter open, they had moved in, and some of them were doing illegal activities. So police was called and they were uh, trespassed and uh, taken out of the shelter. So we lost eight of those um, over the weekend. In addition to that, um, all our seniors uh, got moved out of the senior center and into the micro units at the Sacred Hearts Church. There's four more of them that'll be moving out tomorrow because um, there was one uh, thing that they lacked. So before they actually made the transition, our guys are gonna be moving them um, tomorrow. So put them in their own little uh, micro units. Um, yeah. uh, the Poho, as you all know, the Poho Community Center will be uh, used as an early voting and uh, a polling station, so that is already being cleared out. So most of the people in the Pohoa shelter are up on the upper level. Um, half of the tents are gone already. 
So people are moving on. Uh, people are uh, energetic. However, there are some that um, uh, needs to be a little motivate, a uh, little bit more motivated. So, and that's the reason that we've been having people come to them uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Well, they'll be doing an individual one-to-one, -one working with them, and getting their application. Uh, you know, what is, uh, what, what, what are the barriers that they're facing? So, we're getting a little bit better handle on, you know, what the status is on, on what it is. Um, it's not, you know, the reason this is like this, it's not because of a lack of um, caring or a lack of um, people not doing their job. What has happened is when this broke out, it was like we got the call at 345 and at 4 o'clock I needed a shelter open. So anybody who walked through those doors who needed a place, the word was and the orders were, we accept everyone. We weren't going to be taking applications and having them stand in line. We accepted everyone. We had cots, we had place ready, and we had food available for them. You know, so it was that fast. So by 4.30, we were operational. And when something goes on like that, and you got like 250 people walking through your doors uh, on that first day, um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Um, and just having that 24-hour uh, uh, thing going on. In addition to that, just so that you have some, you can kind of gauge what's happened. Uh, we started out, the highest number of uh, evacuees we had at the all shelters was like 485. And as of yesterday, we had 219, but I believe that the number has dropped to 180 something this morning. But I need to verify those numbers before I actually tell you, yes, it dropped another 20 or 30. So, you know, things are moving forward. It's, um, and there are options. Um, uh, what the planning department is trying to do is look on a more of a long range uh, type, uh, long term kind of thing. And uh, that takes a little bit more, uh, a little bit more uh, knowledge. And you got to think of all the different angles because we don't want to be faced with a situation whereby we make a mistake now and later on down the road where uh, we get them back at the shelter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Well, I'm glad that I asked you. Thank you for the update. Um, You're welcome. What has been a few of the barriers to rehousing that you've been hearing? Some of the barriers are that um, some of the people that are at the shelter. Number one, um, they were not. Um, they were not. They are chronically unemployed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I come from an employment, the HR field, and when you say someone is chronically unemployed, which means that. They have a job for three months, then they don't work, and then they have a job for six months, and then they work, and then, you know, so a lot of them have been chronically unemployed. There are some people that have medical um, disabilities mm -hmm. that are, are still at the shelter. However, most of those that have the severe medical uh, disabilities are being placed into the micro units. Um, there are a couple of uh, families there that, um, uh, didn't want to be found, so <laughs> they gave us uh, wrong information. Uh, they gave us false names, and after uh, going through and trying to work with these individuals, we found out after the fact that um, these were some of the barriers. So these are the people that are left. Um, you know, most of the people that checked into the shelter the first few weeks uh, stayed for a couple of, couple of nights, uh, moved out, and moved on. Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, are working towards um, uh, a more permanent uh, state. Uh, there are some that um, was in a rental situation and uh, cannot find affordable rental units. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's the issue. Great, thank you. You know, so it's a, it's a lack of availability of um, the uh, appropriate, where it can fit their, um, their means, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Do we have an estimate on how many people have been displaced? I can only tell you or verify what, you know, our total number was 485 at the shelters. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that did not come to the shelters. They lived with family. They moved into other, they had other houses, uh, you know. Um, so uh, really hard for me to say, uh, to quantify, uh, give a, a realistic estimate on that. Thank you. Does um, Mr. Takimoto, do we have any estimates on how many 
have been displaced. The about as of yesterday, the confirmed number of destroyed homes was 700. Um, inaccessible is around 50. We don't. Oh. We don't have. I'll add that FEMA has had something like 2,000 folks registered. Yeah, I heard that this at this morning's brief. FEMA had 2,000 so registered? Yeah. So wow. the, FEMA, the FEMA data, the registration data, is the source where we can get all kinds of information, mm -hmm. the detail. But that is forthcoming. Right, th thanks. We mentioned encouraging accessory dwelling units. And you mentioned uh, ways of streamlining the process for guest homes and ohanas. And one of those ways was um, streamlining the pre-approved packaged homes. Are there any other ways that you're looking at to streamline these accessory dwelling units? Okay, so this one, we want a very controlled application. So under the emergency proclamation, the Department of Health will waive the requirement to upgrade from cesspool to septic, provided that the total number of bedrooms does not exceed five bedrooms and there is no kitchen. So that basically means a guest house. Um, but we want to, the reason why I say we want to control it, because after the disaster ends, we want to make sure those are in good places where we want them. Mm -hmm. So all those smart growth principles that I mentioned earlier, that is the target areas where we want to direct these exempt guest houses to. Great, yeah, we want them in alignment with our mm -hmm. uh, development plans. Uh, we also mentioned um, in incentivizing long-term rentals to enhance the affordable rental rate, or rental class rate, what, what does that mean? Um, right now, not so much in East Hawaii, but maybe it is. So we need to take a look. But definitely West Hawaii, as an example, the, of the affordable rental rate to qualify for the, that class, property tax class, is way too low. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense relative to the market rent. Um, so we need to get that realigned better. Um, okay. Then the other thing is to somehow incentivize the Section 8, and one idea for that is to include that in the Chapter 19, um, that if they um, accept Section 8, then they can qualify for that, that property tax class, because Section 8 allows the landlord to rent at actually a higher rent than the rent stated, the affordable rent. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, great. Thank you.